The first snows appear when winter arrives. The temperatures have fallen. Summer temperatures may reach 30 degrees centigrade, but in winter the temperature rarely gets above freezing. At night, it may fall to 50 degrees below zero. The snows cover the pastures and it becomes more and more difficult to get to them. The blanket of snow gets larger and larger during the winter and may be over three meters thick. In the mountains, the layer is even bigger, 10 meters of snow. This is definitely the hardest time of the year for the local fauna. Many wapitis die during this period. The survivors go to the northern region of Yellowstone, which is the lowest area and almost the only place where it's still possible to graze. They are not the only ones. The bison have also arrived here. These impressive bovids are better prepared to face the hardships of winter than the elks. Their summer fur has disappeared. In its place there is a dense layer of fur several centimeters thick which covers them completely and isolates them from the cold. At last spring arrives, the snows melt and a new cycle of life begins. The increase in temperatures brings electrical storms and forest fires. Every year the region is hit by several forest fires which are put out by the spring rains. The most serious fire on record occurred in 1988. 470,000 hectares of land went up in flames before the fire brigades could put it out. Yellowstone had lost a third of its forests and many animals had died. However, these catastrophes are a part of the natural cycle. Fire is fundamental for the regeneration of the forest. The burnt soil receives sunlight for the first time in many years. Seeds may shoot, and this process is helped by a layer of ash which is rich in nutrients for the plants. In just a few years, new trees will have replaced the previous generation. Yellowstone was declared a national park in 1872, a year after the second expedition was sent to confirm its existence. 9,000 square kilometers of unspoiled land acquired for the first time in history a new legal status, the objective of which was conservation. The way forward was not easy. Both public and private initiative put the interests of tourism before the protection of the ecosystem. In 1930, the grey wolves were exterminated in a campaign against park predators. The reason given for this was that they killed the large herbivores, 
which were the main attraction for visitors. Effective measures to protect the park only started to be taken in the 1960s. Today, hunting is forbidden and only 5% of the total area of the park is open to visitors. After two centuries of barbarism, the spirits of the Shoshone Indians may rest in peace. Their dwelling place has become sacred territory once again, a paradise which at last has come to be respected by the white man.